After harvest, perishable commodities have a very limited life if they are kept at room temperatures at 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Leafy greens like this will probably have a shelf life of only two to four hours if they're not brought down to cold temperatures after harvest. Some products such as uh, fruits and some of the hardier root crops have longer storage lives but even they will have a life of only two to four days perhaps if they are not brought down to their proper cold storage temperatures. All products need to be cooled after harvest to maintain their maximum shelf life. Cold storage can increase the product life after harvest by five to ten times. Al Corshane recently finished building a cold room for his farm. We were operating out of an eight by ten cold room which, uh, which only can, we can only put maybe a tenth of what we pick on a daily basis in that space. This, this room, we have the flexibility of, of picking more than we're actually going to sell that day and ship that day. Anything that we pick over that, we can, we can immediately call up, keep it and uh, feel confident that it's going to be safe and uh, last a couple days. What this does, it gives me tremendous flexibility in terms of marketing uh, and it, it's it really is just it it also gives me tremendous flexibility in terms of maintaining uh, inventory of fruit and being able to to see what what we've got at a glance without having to climb over boxes in, in, in the small space that we were using before well typically uh, during the height of our season uh, we would have to leave it on the trees if we if we couldn't sell it if I didn't have a sale for it that day I'd leave it on the tree I wouldn't pick it because we had no place to store it um, and I'd, I'd often go out there at the end of a day uh, in the evening or the next morning and I'd see fruit on the ground as a result of not having picked it at the nick of time. Uh, and so um, I, there have been times when I've estimated that we've lost uh, up to $3,000 a day just, just because we haven't had the capacity to pick it that day and with a place to put it. This video describes the value of proper cold storage and some of the cold storage options available to small-scale growers. Small-scale cold rooms can be farmer-built, made from used transport vehicles, or purchased as new or used prefabricated cold rooms. Growers with small amounts of product can cool or store their perishable commodities in used refrigerated vehicles. Highway trailers are easy to transport to the farm and can be moved from field to field if needed in different production areas. But they are often expensive, costing more than $30 per square foot of floor area. They are diesel operated and have greater maintenance costs than electric refrigeration systems. All of the product must be lifted to floor height for loading. Used trailers often have damaged insulation and excessive air leakage. Insulated or refrigerated rail cars can sometimes be purchased inexpensively, but they are costly to transport and install on the farm. Marine containers can also be purchased or rented for cold room space. They are less expensive to haul to the farm, but often cost more than $30 per square foot to buy. Few transport vehicles have refrigeration systems designed to produce high humidity storage and can cause excessive water loss. The cooling capacity is often too small for rapid cooling of large amounts of product. They are only about eight feet wide. It is impossible to reach the products stored in the front of the vehicle without leaving an open aisleway. This unused space can be 45% of the vehicle's floor area. Restaurants and stores use factory-built rooms for cold storage. This farmer purchased a used unit and installed it on his farm. New rooms cost at least $45 per square foot. Used prefabricated rooms can sometimes be bought for much less. They are easy to assemble and disassemble and can be resold later. Most farmers will need to hire a contractor to install the refrigeration equipment. Many growers have found they can inexpensively construct their own cold rooms. 
This grower built his storage room inside his existing barn for about $15 per square foot. His cost included purchasing a used refrigeration system and hiring a contractor to install it. This type of cold room uses traditional insulated wood frame construction with a few modifications to protect the wood from moisture condensation and decay attack. The first consideration in building your own cold room is to determine size. Floor area needed is based on the greatest amount of product you plan to hold at any one time. Review your daily production records over the last few years to estimate the number of boxes you will need to hold. Boxes can often be stacked six feet high to reduce needed floor area. Also plan for expansion. It may be less expensive to build the room a little bigger now than move walls and add refrigeration capacity later. Hand trucks need a four-foot aisle to allow access to all product. Pallets moved with a pallet jack need at least a six-foot wide aisle. Leave four to six inches between the walls and the product to allow refrigerated air to remove heat that penetrates the room from outside. Products stacked directly against walls may not be kept cold. Leave space between recently packed product. This speeds cooling. Opening the boxes will speed cooling even more. Ceiling height should allow at least an 18 inch free space above the product. This leaves room for the evaporator coil and allows air from the coil to reach all parts of the room. Many cold rooms are built with 10 or 12 foot walls to allow even more free air space. It is convenient to design the room with a door for incoming product and another door for outgoing produce. This allows two people to work in the room with less interference. Locate the incoming product door to allow smooth product flow from the packing area or field. The outgoing door should open directly toward the loading area. Your utility service must be large enough to handle the new refrigeration system. Small cold rooms use at least three to five horsepower motors. They are best operated with three-phase power. 10 horsepower motors usually require a three-phase service.